Whenever I am presented with a new royal theory or a question that someone has, this goes for the Meghan Markle fake pregnancy allegation to the recent speculation that the photo of Kate Middleton is not actually Kate. First thing I do is try to find any issues in the argument presented. I poke holes just like I know people will do when I present something. I turn the question or the comment or the piece of evidence over and over and over. I ask myself, what is the simplest logical conclusion that one could reach. Occam's razor, typically the simplest answer is the correct one, which I know is not as fun on the internet. As I was discussing yesterday with Amanda of Matta of Fact, subtlety isn't sexy anymore. But I think there is something way more interesting about this Kate Middleton photo than if her moles disappear. The simplest answer I could come up with is the fact that somebody took this photo and removed the graininess from it. And in doing so, it would distort the original photo and possibly remove other things and make some things look blurry. Because unless the graininess was added in post and the person who edited this photo had access to the original photo and could remove the layer of graininess added, I don't see how this is a case of disappearing moles. But that is not what I wanna talk about. I think there is a way more interesting story that we can find through lines in and it has to do with privacy. One of the things that has been thrown my way is why would they do this through a US outlet? Why wouldn't the British media confirm it? Why wouldn't they print it? I think looking at the history of the British royal family and the British media, we can see why. Not to mention the fact that just last week, Kate's reps gave a bewildering exclusive to page six. We're in the age of the internet. A US outlet publishing this photo doesn't mean that people in the UK and across the world are not going to see it. We are not in the days of the Edward and Wallace affair where the UK press agreed to not report on a widely known secret, mostly because of personal vendettas against certain government members and the hope of getting the first scoop when Edward was ready to go public with Wallace. The UK went so far that while American media was discussing Wallace and Edward in their papers, when American papers were sent to the UK to be sold, they would would cut out anything related to Wallace and Edward before the papers were sold. I've seen a lot of people state that after Princess Diana's death, there were legal regulations put on the British media so that this would not happen again, including the use of long lens photography. I think that was how the picture of Kate and Carol was taken. But as far as I can tell in my research, it seems like there is a confusion over legal changes and changes that the press quickly acquiesced to so there wouldn't be further government interference in the press and so that they could retain their access to the British royal family. Sarah Ferguson was caught in the early 90s with her toes being suckled by someone who was not her husband, Prince Andrew, while on vacation using long lens photography. These pictures were published by the British media. I bring up this example because of what happened decades later when the French edition of Closer magazine published topless photos of Kate on vacation with William. The palace sued the publisher for invasion of privacy, but notably the photographs were not offered to UK outlets. In fact, it was only the week prior to this article being published that they were offered a different set of long lens shots, but they refused them. Perhaps the British media had a change of heart, although we have evidence to the contrary when it comes to Harry and Meghan. Or could it be that during this very same time, Levinson Inquiry was drafting their final report into media conduct and illegal information gathering tactics to then offer the government future regulations that could be implemented on the press, which the press wanted to ignore just like they wanted to ignore it after Diana died. Firmly into the crosshairs of fierce public and parliamentary scrutiny. Truly, they were drinking in the last chance saloon. An emergency meeting of newspaper editors was called and the rules of press engagement were hastily rewritten. Is referring to the Press Complaints Commission, the PCC, who at the time the public considered to be a self-regulating body of the press, who yes, edited their code of conduct, but it wasn't binding. It was just enough to escape real press overhaul by the government after Diana died. Recall, the Levinson report was given to the prime minister at the time, conservative David Cameron, who was like, yeah, cool, we're just gonna scrap this because things have changed. The world has changed. The media has changed. We are not facing the same concerns as we were in the late 90s, early aughts. I beg to differ. This privacy point comes up again when Prince George is a baby and paparazzi are found on private grounds trying to get photos of the toddler, which Gross. And Kensington Palace put out a sternly worded letter against this. Instead of any actual legal change, as we have seen in the past when it came to Prince Harry and Prince William, well, really Prince William, a sort of agreement was put into place between the British royal family and the media. The agreement in this case is you provide us with regular 
official photos of you and the children and we'll respect your privacy, which I still believe translates into we don't want to lose our access. But this arrangement would make our readers happy, which brings us to the turnip toff rumors. I did a comprehensive video on this that you can find on my page. To be clear, my interest is not in if there was an affair or not. My interest is in how the media reacted. I know it's hard to read, but I did a timeline on this. Rumors of a rural rift bubble up in the Daily Mail and in the Sun, published at the time by Dan Wooten, who was the showbiz editor. I have a video on my Endgame playlist where I pull in what Omid Scoby has written about this. But here's the thing. Us Weekly, an American tabloid, publishes news that there is an alleged affair that caused this rift between Kate and Rose. And the British media goes silent. They don't just go silent, they scrub any and all pieces related to this matter. In large part because Prince William's white shoe law firm sent a letter stating that this was false speculation, but also a breach of his privacy pursuant to Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights. Which people found interesting because why not go the libel route besides not wanting a court case. This privacy argument seems to stop the British media in its tracks, dependent on who the royal in question is. Which brings us back to the photo. As of this recording, we have only heard that the UK media will not publish these photos and that Kensington Palace has reiterated for people to respect her privacy. And that brings up a very interesting question that I don't have time for as to what should be private and what should be public when it comes to the royals in terms of information that the taxpayers of the UK receive. This is where I can see the PR game plan though. That doesn't mean that back channels or a family member of Kate couldn't have contacted Backgrid to get this photo. The timing is too much of a coincidence. I think logically Kate has been out and about, but the press has held back. Fact of the matter is people were starting to question her whereabouts and the online chatter was getting out of control. In theory, this photo would allow Kensington Palace to not buckle to public demands, not compromise on this idea of respect, while still a photo getting out there. I agree, this photo has not helped, but Palace Comms has a history of ham-handed PR decisions. Who can forget the colonial chic pictures of William and Kate in the Caribbean? They've botched things before. This also allows the UK press like Chris Ship to nobly state that they will not be posting the photos out of respect for her privacy while she recovers, which continues with this drumbeat that they do in fact respect privacy. And that in fact, they have in fact changed despite what some of the cases making their way through the UK court system by Prince Harry and others might suggest. There are no need for government regulations. We're self-governing. But would it endure them to the public if they publish the photos? No. And they don't have to publish the photos because they're out there for everyone to see. Does this allow them to maintain a moral high ground? Yes. Do I still think privacy is a code word for, I don't wanna lose my access to the palace? I do. With all of that said, I want to take a moment to revisit the Harry and Meghan New York City car chase and how it was covered by the British media. That is for the next video. Stay tuned.